Christmas. Christmas, he came to pay a debt. That's what he came here upon this earth for. Jesus came to pay a debt. You know, we're going to talk a little different twist upon Christmas than what we're used to hearing or sometimes even wanting to hear. But Jesus came to pay a debt. That's why he came here. He came to this earth not to give us a reason to celebrate, not to give us a reason to have a party and to elaborate on gift giving and, and overeating and things like this. Jesus came that we might be able to have life here upon this earth and to have it more abundantly. Um, you know, he came to pay a debt. Wouldn't it be nice this Christmas to have someone come and pay off all your debts that you owed? You know, Jesus came and he did pay off a debt that you could not pay off. You know, a lot of people run up their charge cards and, and they get all kinds of debt and they have a hard time paying it back or they depend on someone else to pay it back by bankruptcy or whatever. But yet, Jesus came to pay a debt that you were not able to pay even if you had the finances or the means. He came to pay a debt for you and me. That's why he came here to this earth. He didn't come here that we might celebrate him as the babe in the manger. He didn't come here that we might be able to have all these festivities, bright lights, and uh, they have a Christmas parade and they have Santa Claus and the reindeers and all this. That's not why he came here. They're trying to eradicate him out of the reason for the season, but they've... They've already removed a lot of the reason why he ever even come. The church doesn't even know for the most part why he came. Jesus come. Jesus came to earth to pay a debt that he did not owe. He came to pay a debt for you and for me and for everyone that's here. He came to pay a debt. Why is it that most Christians only celebrate Christmas as his birth? You know, a lot of times most Christmas, Christians, they only celebrate Christmas as his birth and they leave it at there. They don't go any further than his birth. Oh, Jesus came as the babe in the manger. Oh, Joseph and Mary, they had the babe in there, and there's the sheep, and there's here comes the wise men, and here comes the shepherds, and that's all there is, and that's the end of it. No, friend, that's the beginning of it. Jesus didn't just come so that we could celebrate his birth. He came, and we're going to talk about that here a little, a little bit more here in a little bit, but he came to pay a price of a debt that he did not owe. He came to pay for you, for me, for everyone here. Jesus just didn't come to earth to be born of a virgin named Mary and to give us a reason to celebrate and to have a party. That's not why he came. He didn't come to just give us a reason to have a party. He came that he might die. He didn't come to, you know, people look at, at a newborn as, as life. Look at that life and that child. But Jesus came, his eyes weren't up on that manger as for life. He came that he seen more of death than he did of life because he wanted to give himself as the sacrificial lamb that we might have hope. He, you know, most people are so selfish and self-centered. They only think about their self, you know, for Christmas or any other time for the most part. They think about their self, but Jesus was selfless. He looked down from heaven and looked down and seen the plight of man. He seen the destruction. He seen where they were headed. They were on their uh, greased rail on their way to hell and going in by the groves. And yet Jesus said, seen there was no hope. He said, I'm going to go down there and give myself a ransom that they might have some hope. Jesus is the hope. He said, not only that, he said, I want to go down there. He says, here they are down there having all this troubles and, and, and trouble, and they don't know how, and I don't know how to relate to them. He said, I'm going to go down that I might be touched with the feelings of your infirmities, that he might know how you feel when you're in trouble. You know, I've mentioned this before, Jesus, you know, when he was upon that cross, he didn't just carry our sins upon that cross. He carried all of our sickness, our disease, our infirmities. You know, it's not a facsimile of, of what problem you might be having, uh, sickness or disease. Jesus carried that exact infirmity, disease, pain, suffering, hurt upon his vesture. He knows exactly, friend, how you feel because he carried it. That's why he came to this earth, that he might be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, that he might know exactly how you feel, that he might be able to help you in whatever uh, plight that you're in, whatever trouble that you might be in, that he might be able to help you. You know, a lot of times people, they want to help you, or sometimes they say they want to help you, or they say, well, I know how you feel. They don't really know how you feel. They've never been there. You know, they might have had a similar situation, uh, but it's not the exact. Jesus knows that exact 
feeling how you feel because he carried it upon his vesture. He knows how you feel. That's why he came to this earth, friend. He didn't come here just to be a baby in the manger. He came here that he might carry all your sins upon his vesture, that he might carry all your infirmities, everything upon him, that you might be set free. Amen? You know, Jesus came that he might pay the ransom for our sins. We are ransomed into sin. And Jesus came that he might pay the ransom for our sin with his very own blood. You know, the Bible states that uh, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission for sin. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission for sin. There's no hope. That's why he knew when he came to this earth, you know, he, wanted, he, don't, he would rather be celebrated more as the risen Savior than he would be as the babe in the manger. Are you hearing me this morning? Hello? That's the reason we got to celebrate, because he died and rose again that we might live and have opportunity to live eternally with him. You know, Christmas is more, like I said, is more about his death than it is about his life. You don't see the world and even the church celebrating his death, his burial, and his resurrection like you see them celebrating his birth. Why? Because death, you know, nobody likes a funeral. You know, nobody likes a funeral. You know, funeral, there's nothing to party about a funeral, but this one there is. You know, it, they don't like to talk about his death because it exposes their sin and it brings conviction. Friend, you know, you can talk about Jesus' death and what he's done for you when you're living holy and uprightly before him. You don't feel that conviction. Friend, if I ain't living right, if I'm not walking uprightly and holy before him, I pray and I say, God, I want to be, I want my sin to be exposed. I want to live uprightly and holy for you. I, I want, I want to, I want to be convicted because I want to live right. I want to make heaven my home. I don't want to be left here in this mess. You know, the world the church doesn't mind exploiting his birth for personal gain and satisfaction. They don't mind exploiting his birth as a holiday to celebrate that they might get personal gain and some, some personal satisfaction out of it. But they don't want to talk about his true reason for his coming was to die that he might expose and destroy the works of the devil. He came here that he might expose and destroy the works of the devil. Why do you think the devil is trying to eradicate Christ out of Christmas? Eradicate anything to do with the Bible? You know, you got these atheists with all these uh, billboards and that now saying that the, uh, you know, think we need to think about uh, reason, reason, reasonably about the the season. In other words, is it, you know, Christmas is a myth. You know, let me tell you something. When you when you're standing here before him, friend, and if you've denied him and called yourself an atheist, friend, it won't take you long after you've taken your first breath or last breath to realize that Christmas and Christ is not a myth, friend, because you're going to stand before him and you're going to see him as he is and he's going to see you as you were. Hello, Jesus. Jesus does not want to be seen only as the baby in the manger. He wants to be seen as your savior, your redeemer, the one who has paid the price for you and your sins. He wants you to see him as your door of escape. From this doomed sinful world. You know, Jesus said, I'm the door. He said, I'm the door. He said, you can't get into the sheepfold unless you come through me, the door. You got to come through me. He said, not through that baby. Not that baby. The baby's not in the manger anymore. He, he was a resurrected, crucified, resurrected Savior now. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father. He said, if you want to get to the Father, you got to go through me. He said, me, Jesus. Not the baby. You know, the baby. You know, people aren't convicted when they think about a baby. But when you start talking about the crucified Savior and all that blood and gore and, and such, you know, we, we, we see him, even that movie that, that, uh, that they made about the passion of the Christ doesn't even come close to depicting what all Jesus went through. You know, they had a little thing around, around him, friend, he was crucified naked. He didn't have a stitch of clothing upon him. And the, and the Bible speaks and said there was no beauty in him, in him that any would desire him. In other words, his mother didn't even recognize him because they beat him with all the ferocity of hell. They beat him, be, you know, oh, beyond, and, you know, he should have died at that whipping post because his insides, he was cut to the quick with a cat nine tails. He was almost destroyed uh, and died there and he could have, and yet he knew he had to get to the cross. 